Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Selby. I'm the social media head here at GMAT Club, and I'm here to welcome you to GMAT Club's MBA application walkthroughs. In these MBA application walkthroughs, we will feature admissions experts and admission teams who, who are going to be going step by step through every aspect of the online application. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated and support us in organizing more events. I will be your host, and in today's walkthrough, we are covering Tepper School of Business. Together with me is Tony Gomez, who is the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Tepper. Also, guys, stay tuned for an application fee waiver link in the live chat. We will be uploading it soon. So, Tony, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, Selby. Happy to be here. Happy to talk to you and uh, the whole GMAC Club uh, community. Awesome. And guys, feel free to ask your questions in the live chat. We will definitely bring them up during this session. And yeah, it's awesome to have everyone join. All right, Tony, uh, I'm going to ask my first question here. Um, what advice would you give for applicants who are currently working on their applications? Yeah. So if you're currently working on your application, I would advise to, to keep going. Right. Mm -hmm. The MBA application process is big. It's daunting. Um, if you're doing it right, you should be asking a lot of reflective questions of yourself. Right. Finding what those motivations are for wanting to pursue your MBA um, it is not an easy program, no matter which school you, part mm -hmm. uh, you decide to enroll in, especially at a school no uh, like Tepper where we have the reputation for being a tech focused, uh, quantitatively rigorous school. Um, but no, no, know those values that you bring into the program, know why you want to be going and just keep going. Don't let things become a barrier to you. My job is to help remove those barriers if I can, right? So if you're facing something administratively, reach out to me, reach out to my team. We are here to support you every single step of the way. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Tony, so do you recommend applicants to apply in round one or wait till their application can make substantial improvements, uh, you know, like in test scores, etc.? I always recommend applicants to apply when they're ready. Mm. Right? You never want to rush your application um, or, you know, knowing that, let's say that you scored a, I don't know, a 620 on, on your GMAT, um, you know that you can bring it up higher. You know that you can make that more competitive. Um, I would not submit my my score, my application with that type of score right now if I know I can improve, right? So make sure that you take mm -hmm. your time. When it feels right, you'll know. Have other people look your application over as well. Get some, get some of your support network involved in this mm -hmm. and apply when you're ready, when you feel that you are most competitive with the existing classes um, profile. Mm -hmm. All of the schools, Tepper, we will be we will be publishing our class profile very soon. Those students who are admitted uh, admitted fall twenty twenty three, mm -hmm. see how you stack up compared to that profile. When you feel good about it, hit that submit button. Awesome. Okay, makes complete sense. Um, all right. Uh, my next question here would be, uh, what are some of the top traits that Tepper looks for in an applicant? Ah, top traits that we look for in our applicants. Man, there are a lot of good traits that our applicants come in with. Um, and, and really, our entire student body is very diverse in those traits that they bring. Um, mm -hmm. Number one, I would say, would be that intellectual curiosity. Right, um, You're coming to grad school. Again, after possibly having had, you know, you've definitely had your bachelor's experience. You possibly had a master's already. Um, some people have come in having earned their doctorates as well. So you have to have that intellectual curiosity to want to keep going through academics and to explore new topics that you haven't explored before within the mm -hmm. business realm. Um, you also have to have that, that self-motivation, that drive to not only handle that academic side of things, which is rigorous, which can be difficult, can be daunting, but also the recruiting side of the MBA equation too, right? that networking component to make sure that you're getting your foot in the door, that you're putting your face in front of people, that people are remembering you as well when it comes time to look for those internship opportunities and eventually that full-time job opportunity during your second year. Mm -hmm. um, other things that I look for specifically when, when developing my class at Tepper, I want students who have a sense of empathy and a sense of social responsibility 
Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to go out into the community and leave things better than the way they found it. Right? Mm -hmm. I want them to have that that sense of knowing that they have a responsibility to the people around them to help really improve society for the better. Mm, interesting. And I mean, of course, like, you know, different people come from different, you know, work experiences. Mm -hmm. Some work experiences might not really show those traits that you're talking mm -hmm. about. So what is the for them? Yeah. Um, so in your in your application, you can you can really highlight a lot of that through your resume. Um, mm. Perhaps you entered a profession that was much different than your undergraduate degree, mm -hmm. right? Maybe it's, maybe take a bullet point to explain how you got yourself up to speed. Mm -hmm. right? if, if you're in your application, um, the, we have the optional essay too to really discuss whatever it is you feel needs additional explanation. That's really going to be your canvas to paint a complete picture of who you are as a candidate. Um, I have been doing admissions for a while now. I started back in 2015 uh, in, in the admission space at the undergraduate level. I told my students back then too, if you ever have an optional part of the application, it is an option. Take your time, fill it out. It's there for a reason. Um, you should be completing the big, the most full picture of yourself that you can to the admissions committee. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that you could do is leave us asking questions at the mm -hmm. end of your application. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, in, in terms, uh, in regards to the essays, what exactly mm -hmm. would you say Pepper is looking for, and what are they? What what might they not be looking for? Yeah. Um, so I will tell you right now, our essay topic is. Um, tell us about a time where you have contributed or led an initiative to creating a, an inclusive environment. Mm -hmm. So there is the prompt. It's on our website as well. We're looking to see how you've contributed to, make, to, to help contribute to a sense of belonging among your peers, among your coworkers, among classmates. Um, mm -hmm. Or to see any, anything that you've done to lead those initiatives as well. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say something not to do would be to just talk about the topic in your first few sentences and pivot position, right? Make sure that this is something meaningful to you, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure that you, can, you have some type of demonstrated impact to talk about with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, sure that many, I'm sure that many of the viewers have had something. Again, this yeah. goes back to the whole reflective nature of the application. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to sit and think about this question for them. Okay, makes sense. Um, all right. I uh, wanted to also talk a little bit about, you know, the student community. Mm -hmm. How is this like, uh, you know, at Tepper? Yeah, uh, so Tepper really is unlike any place I've been. Uh, I have been at, at a lot of large universities in different business programs. Um, Tepper really is a collaborative and supportive community at its core. If you look at our class sizes, you know, we are intentionally a smaller program. Mm -hmm. um, our current class size uh, for our first year class is about 172. Uh, the year before that was about 192, 195. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're developing these strong bonds among our student bodies from diverse mm -hmm. backgrounds. Um, but what's nice too is because they're coming from all these different backgrounds, we have some coming from more Want tech heavy backgrounds, some from more liberal arts backgrounds, they're able to complement each other in, mm -hmm. in different ways throughout their Tepper experience in the classroom or in their co curricular environment. Yeah. So, for example, if we have those, those computer science majors who are great at SQL and coding and Python and R, they can pull these vast quantities of data, but they may have some trouble telling the story behind mm -hmm. that data, right? that's where somebody from that non-traditional background can come in and help show them how to craft that story. Or on the other side, they're learning how to do these more technical approaches with our more technical-minded students. Okay. Uh, Tony, I do have some live questions and I'll just bring Wonderful. some of them. Okay. Happy to hear. Okay. So first one's from Cody. Uh, who's saying, hey, Tony, uh, do you have any guidelines for the quantitative side of the GMAT score? I have a Q44, total GMAT of 720. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel Q44 is too low for any reason? 
so if, if I'm looking at this, I'm going to be looking holistically at your application. So I'm also going to take that Q44 into consideration with what your undergraduate preparedness looks like as far as your quant side of things and what you're also doing in your day-to-day -day job. So, it, you know, it, it's very tough for me to give a pure yes or no. There are a lot of other factors that are going to be considered when, when looking at, at your score, right? I would say right now a Q44 is not the end of the road, but I need to see the full picture. Uh, someone who wrote, hi, Tony, thanks for taking the session. Can a CMU master's alum refer a student to the Tepper MBA program? What is the process to do so? Absolutely. We're happy to have alumni referrals at all times. Um, if, if you're able to, please reach out to the uh, master's admissions office at Tepper. Uh, feel free to send the, that person's name and uh, contact information, and we'll generate them in our system, and someone will reach out to them. Awesome. Okay. Uh, all righty. Uh, I have a question from my end. Um, so we talked about the student community. Look, could you also talk a little bit about the student clubs at Tepper? Yeah, so we have a very robust um, set of clubs at Tepper. Um, mm -hmm. Our clubs tend to go into to two different places. So they are professional aligned as well as affinity based organizations. So your professional clubs really span the gamut from everything from consulting, impact investing, um, venture capital, uh, and your affinity clubs go from uh, cultural identity even to, to different hobbies. So for example, you know, we have a um, South Asian business club as well as a culinary club, a foodies club, where students will go around and try different uh, food options around the city of Pittsburgh. So really there, there's a robust um, co-curricular uh, uh, co-curricular opportunities to keep you very involved while you're at Tepper. Um, I often hear students, alumni, saying when they reach either that graduation point or after graduation, man, I wish I had more time to join more clubs and organizations while I was at Tepper. Yeah, interesting. Awesome. I don't know if there's like a food club as well. That actually sounds nice. Oh, yeah. There's a food club and there's a wine club for those of you who are, who are connoisseurs in that area as well. My kind of club. <laughs> Would love to join. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we do have a few more live questions here. Um, Mahima asked, "Hi, can you give details on the Net Impact Club at Tepper? Coming from ESG background, that club really stands out to me." Yeah. So um, Net Impact is doing really great things at Tepper. Um, they are involved. They do have some direct roles within um, our investment uh, portfolio at, at Tepper. Um, What's wonderful, too, is they have a robust network of alumni and different corporate connections that they are sharing with their club members. So alumni will come back and give presentations or they will have speak networking events uh, to really you know, help their their members get to that next step within their careers. Mm, okay. uh, she also asked, um, you know, how do you feel about a finance enthusiast fitting in a data-driven MBA at Tepper? Come on over. We have a lot of finance students uh, within Tepper. Um, I believe that I've gone further. Selby, are you still? Selby, are you still there? I'm still so anyway, um, we do have quite a few finance students within Tepper. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, we, we have a, uh, a great curriculum based around our finance program, great outcomes for our finance students. Um, you will be welcome with open arms at, uh, awesome. at Tepper. Awesome. Okay. I have another question here. Uh, someone asked, at Tepper, does a higher work experience, which is around eight plus years, compensate for a lower GMAT score? So that is a great question. I would say that, you know, it, it, it's tough to give a, a yes or no to that one as well. It yeah. all depends on what that experience looks like. Right. Mm -hmm. What have you done in those eight years that can offset that lower GMAT score? Mm -hmm. You can also, you know, based on that question, too, you could also determine if you would qualify for a standardized test waiver as well. Mm -hmm. So we do offer that option through our application. Uh, to, to qualify for that option, you would essentially tell us what your academic and professional uh, preparedness have looked like up to this point mm -hmm. to qualify you to not submit that that score. 
Okay. Right. So have you been, what type of data activities are you doing at work? Um, maybe you have a computer science degree. Um, do you have any professional certifications that were, that had a rigorous quantitative ba background for them? Right. Um, those are all things that can help contribute to that waiver. So again, part of that reflective process at the MBA, what do those eight years look like? And can I apply those to this waiver? Okay, okay. makes sense. Uh, someone here asked, hi, Tony, is it necessary to have an IELTS or a TOEFL score for non-English natives? Great question. I love this question. I get this question every day in my inbox. So <laughs> non-English natives must uh, submit a, a language score unless your undergraduate institution, the mode of, lang of the language of instruction was in English. And we have to have that as official documentation from the university. If we have that, you will not need to submit a TOEFL. But if you don't, yes, you will. Gotcha. Okay, cool. uh, next question. Uh, what's the one thing that sets Tepper apart from other MBA programs that isn't widely known? Wonderful. Um, I wish I could stand up on the rooftops and just shout the praises of our entrepreneurship center, the Sports mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship Center. It is a powerhouse of startups for Carnegie Mellon. It is open to the entire Carnegie Mellon community. It is housed at Tepper. And we have had quite a few, I want to say over 800 startups start out of that uh, that center. Um, the impact of, of the, the CMU startup community on the economy has been over about $2 billion. I'm not sure how familiar you were or the the viewers are of this, but uh, Duolingo, the language learning company, yeah. it's based in Pittsburgh, and it got its start through the Tepper School of Business at the Sword Center. Oh, wow. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. Okay. So definitely our entrepreneurship community, it is top notch. Okay. Uh, next question here. Uh, thank you for the Q&A. Uh, I love Pittsburgh. What are the latest career trends at Tepper? What percentage of grads stay in Pittsburgh versus move out of state? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so our goal really isn't to have you stay in Pittsburgh. We definitely would love you to contribute to the city um, and you'll have plenty of opportunity to interact with those businesses, those companies that are not just based in Pittsburgh, but do have some type of presence here. Um, mm -hmm. We are still working on putting together our current trends uh, from the most recent graduating class. That full report will be released in November. Um, however, we do have a few students year to year decide to stay in Pittsburgh. Um, a lot of some of our students also have applied from Pittsburgh and mm -hmm. just have attended Carnegie Mellon and, and stayed at, at where they are um, due to maybe uh, family commitments. Um, mm -hmm. One student off the top of my head, his wife is a current attending at, um, at, at UPMC, one of our um, medical uh, affiliates. Um, so yeah, we do, we do have uh, some students who, who decide to stay in Pittsburgh. Um, I would say about 25, 24% of our students stay within the Northeast part of the United States. About mm -hmm. another quarter um, of our class decides to go off West. Interesting, okay. Next question. Um, hi, Tony, is CMU a part of Forte Fellowship? Yes, we are. We have a great partnership with Forte, great relationship with Forte. Um, if you are in the area of Washington, D.C. in November, we will be present for Forte's Diversity Day. Um, I believe that is no Thursday, November 2nd. Um, my colleague Gina will be there uh, representing Tepper. Um, by all means, yeah, please. If, if you're a Forte fellow, we definitely support that. We've, uh, we've helped offset the cost for our fellows to attend the National Forte Conference every year as well. Awesome. Okay. Next question. Hi, Tony. How do you see someone coming from a public sector background working in the operations field of public sector, fitting in the MBA cohort at Tepper? I love it. You bring such a unique experience that not many of our of our students may have had. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of our students are coming from that private corporate uh, sector. They have done things in a certain way for a long time. You're bringing a fresh perspective to the to the cohort in terms of class, in terms of the clubs that you join, in terms of the networking connections that you'll be bringing in as well, and the companies that you're looking for. Um, I love seeing the students from non-traditional backgrounds coming to the MBA program. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next question. 
Uh, what are the career opportunities for sustainable managers after MBA who have an architectural background? Oh, wonderful. I actually have a few students this year who have a very similar background. Um, for them, they are looking to go into entrepreneurship. Um, one in particular, off the top of my head, um, Ruben, he is looking at um, sustainable architecture by using, um, oh, I'm going to butcher the terminology, I apologize, this isn't my, my forte, um, but it's a compressed type of wood to build um, facilities. So moving away from traditional plastics and concrete to more wood-based uh, construction. So definitely through the entrepreneurship route, um, we have great um, relationships with different contracting companies as well. Um, we have a nice little pipeline for some ESG work too. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, you do have different options uh, coming through Tepper. Awesome. Okay. Next question. Uh, hi, how is the financial aid or merit-based scholarship decided? Which is the important factor that contributes it to the most? Great question. So again, this is part of our holistic review. So mm -hmm. for the financial aid, um, all of our scholarship awarding is merit-based. Um, anything that comes from loans is done privately if you are a non-US citizen. Um, if you're a US citizen, it comes through uh, your FAFSA and those direct student loans that you did for undergrad as well. Um, but uh, for, for our review, it is purely holistic. We are looking at your application materials um, and throwing in that interview as well. What type of executive presence do you have? Um, how can we see you contributing and improving upon the community that we already have? Um, there are a lot of factors and not just one is going to take you over the line for that, uh, that financial aid. Okay, cool. Uh, next question. Someone here wrote, uh, I am a mechanical engineer and I have two years of work ex in oil and gas. I have a 750 GMAT score. I applied last year and I'm in the wait list. Will being a reapplicant th uh, this year have any impact on my chance? We, we love to see our reapplicants come back into the pool. Um, mm -hmm. I'm eager to see how your application has improved or, and what sort of uh, extra responsibilities that you may have taken on if you've earned any... Um, merits or recognition through your, through your current work. Um, if you have that sort of um, improvements onto your application, absolutely that's going to help improve your, your shot. Um, but again, we, we, we take a look at you compared to the rest of the applicant pool and see what our class needs are. So I do wish you the, the best of luck in that reapplication process. Awesome. <coughs> Next question. How much do referrals from alumni affect the evaluation of an application? Yeah, so we definitely take our alumni referrals into consideration. Um, again, it's just one additional point of data uh, compared to an entire pool of data. So it, it doesn't negatively affect you if you don't have an alumni referral. Um, but it, again, it just helps us uh, consider some other options when we're going through our admissions committee. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Also, guys, I am currently uh, adding the MBA app referral link in the live chat. So for those who want to get, you know, app fee waivers, go ahead and just, you know, go to the form, add the details and voila, <laughs> you'll get it then. Okay, cool. Um, going to the next question. Uh, given that Tepper has world-class entrepreneurship resources, can students benefit from these resources after they have graduated from Tepper? Absolutely, 100%. We have a an alumni from the class of, I believe, 1976, who is mm -hmm. taking advantage of the Swartz Center for Entrepreneurship and the resources associated with that right now. So they have been out of the classroom for, what now, around 50 years, I believe, if I'm counting correctly. Um, so yeah, you, there is no limit uh, to, on your ability to access the, the type of resources once you've graduated. Awesome. Uh, next question here. Uh, what would be the primary recruiting industries? Is it still consulting this past year? Yes, so around 44% of our um, graduating class from uh, 2023 uh, found careers within consulting. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we have, a, we have a healthy population going into the tech industry, as well as finance, and then other industries as well. Gotcha. Okay. 
Uh, I am an air traffic controller for accounting with an engineering degree. How well do I fit into the full-time MBA at Tepper? Yeah, so I would, ask, if I were meeting one-on-one -on -one with you, I would ask you, what does that end goal look like? Right? Mm -hmm. What are some of those transferable skills you're bringing into, into the program? Um, you know, so sort of working from the end there, we can sort of decide what your fit is within the program. Um, this is a great opportunity for you in your application to tell us about those short-term and long-term goals and how you plan to reach them uh, by means of the type of degree. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, how does Tepper deal with the changing tech landscape through jobs uh, and skills uh, bracket push around AI and more technical talent and fewer jobs overall? Yeah. Um, so our master's career services team has done a phenomenal job at helping our recent graduates navigate this tough landscape. And a lot of our recent graduates have had um, the unfortunate news of their full-time offers being pulled or even delayed until uh, February 2024, right? Um, so we help sort of, you know, re You might not need to go to the biggest firm, the biggest company that's able to, to find still a rewarding career in a smaller company, possibly and still have a uh, successful job for your first few years. Um, mm -hmm. um, MBA students that will be at the other end of this and right should be in a better place. Okay. I'll take up another question. Um, Tony, uh, are you still there? Your video oh, there, was... There we go. We had a little... We had Someone's asked here. Selvi, what are your MBA plans? And also, what are the top ways to build a social media brand? Interesting question. Um, well, my MBA plans. Let's see. <laughs> I'll let you guys know in, in a year or so. <laughs> um, but yeah, social media. It's definitely not as easy as people think it is. Um, but yeah. It's an interesting, interesting field to get into, for sure. Not going to lie. Uh, uh, I guess Tony's um, Tony's video sort of, there's there must be some technical issue. Uh, but all in all, uh, thank you guys so much for, you know, asking your questions. It was definitely lovely, you know, getting so many. Um, and yeah, for whoever is still here, feel free to just subscribe to our channel. Guys, we're very close to 100K subs, so it will make our team super happy if we reach it in, you know, a few days. But yeah, overall, thanks, everybody, um, and take care. Bye-bye.